course with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Betty Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Full back Bobby is a boy of nine. He can really hit that line. He's the star because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real gold power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say... He's feeling his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hey! For some time, a series of robberies occurred on the railroad running west through Redtown. The same outlaw gang was thought to be responsible because all the holdups took place in the territory between Redtown and Pecos. Reports of the frequent holdups in the Redtown territory caused consternation and concern among the railroad officials in St. Louis. One morning, the superintendent was called to the office of the railroad president. Morning, Mr. Belding. Good morning, Jim. You sent for me? Yes, Jim. You sit down. Uh, I suppose I'm on the carpet again because of those holdups in the far west. Uh, needless to say, we're very much concerned about them, Jim, but we can't blame you. We've lost several valuable express shipments, as you know. Yes, sir, and we've lost a couple of good express guards, too. Yes, I know, I know. But we may have a solution, Jim. Oh, what do you mean? I mean the car builders have advised me they've completed several robbery-proof express cars. What? Cars that are reinforced with metal. Have heavy locks on the doors and gun slots through which the guard inside can fight off those who may try to approach. Wow. Well, we'll put those cars in use at once. By thunder, that ought to do it. Now, uh, I suggest you put two men in every new express car for a month or so. Mm-hmm. From now on, the outlaws will be the ones who will take bullets, and they'll soon give up trying to rob Tread. <laughs> Two weeks later, six rough-looking men met with Chet Kane, owner of a farm and ranch equipment store in Redtown. Chet sat at his desk in the back office and glared angrily at the group, saying, Well, out with it. What happened? Why didn't you get the bank shipment from the express car? You, Gil, speak up. Now, listen, Chet. We did everything according to your plan. We couldn't get near the express car this time. Why not? Well, it wasn't like the other express cars, Chet. It was like a rolling fort, you might say. Yeah. Had steel doors and gun slots in it. Two guards were shooting through, but we couldn't fight back. Well, that's, 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 that's it. Where's Jake? He stopped a bullet. Got killed. Yeah, yeah. We better lay off the train robberies from now on, Chet. No use trying to get into express cars like the ones they're using now. Listen oh, oh, to yeah. reason, Chet. Just today, Jake got killed. Why can't we hold up stagecoaches and forget about the trains? We've taken plenty of cash and gold from the railroad, Gil. Nobody out this way is using the stages for gold or cash shipments since the railroad came in, and you know it. Yeah, yeah but it's suicide. That's what it is. 
We haven't got a chance when we ride in against one of those new Type Express cars. Too dangerous. Well, I don't intend to have you pull another train robbery until I've figured out a way to get into the Express car without the danger of getting shot. And how are you going to do that, Chet? Give me time to think. Chet rose and paced the floor of the large combination office and storeroom. Finally, he stopped before a large wooden chest upon which two of the men were sitting. I have it. Get off that chest, you two. Huh? What are you going to do? What are you thinking of, Chet? Yeah. Why are you staring at that wooden chest? It gives me an idea. Chests like that are made to be used on chuck wagons to hold cooking utensils and stuff like that. I sell a lot of them. What if you do? That chest is big enough to hold a man, Sid. I reckon so. What about it? Here, look. A small air hole on each side. And the lid fastens with a padlock. Yeah, I see. If I shipped one by Railroad Express from here to Pecos, somebody could easily be inside it. I don't say it. All right, listen. Do I get it? Yeah. Catch here at the top edge consists of two parts. The part attached to the lid has a hinged piece with an opening in it. That flat piece of iron turns down over the edge like this. A small iron loop there, just below the edge, fits through the opening. And the padlock is slipped through and locked. Like this. You must think we're dumb. We all know about that. Yeah. And if anyone was inside, how could he get out with that padlock closed? The hinged piece is attached to the lid by two bolts, secured by nuts inside the lid. Well, those two nuts on the inside would be loosened. The man in the chest could take them off, push out the bolts, and be ready to raise the lid, even though the padlock is still there. When it's time to go into action. Hey, now I get it. One of us is shipped inside the locked chest. When the train is stopped for a hold-up and the others start moving in, the hombre in the chest pops up, plugs the two guards inside the express car, then unbolts the doors for the gang. That's it, Gil. I think it'll work. Why, sure. Yeah, but who's sure. going to be the hombre inside the Yeah, you can count me out. Me, too. Why, you fools, what could go wrong? Yeah. It's your idea, Chet. Why don't you be the one? Why, sure. Sure. Go ahead. Well, all right. All right, I'll do it. But you men be sure to follow my orders. I don't want any slip-ups. Sure. Sure. When are we going to try out the idea? I'll let you know. Those officials will discover their new express cars aren't robbery-proof after all. Several days later in St. Louis, the railroad president was again talking to the superintendent. Well, Jim, I had word the outlaws tried again, but didn't succeed because of the new express car. That's good news, Mr. Belling. However, people are afraid to ride as passengers over our far west division because of that gang. So I carried out an idea of mine that may result in the outlaws' capture if they make another try. Oh, what is your idea? I arranged by telegraph for the mask man, an Indian we met at the dedication ceremonies last year, to board the next westbound Pegasus Express just east of Redtown. Uh, we'll let it be known the train is carrying a big gold shipment. You mean the Lone Ranger and his friend Tonto will be on that particular train? Yes, the Lone Ranger will discard his mask and disguise his features. Mm. He'll take the place of one of the guards in the express car. Tonto will ride in the baggage car with their horses. Uh, how will that help? Now, if the outlaws stop the train, our two friends will help drive them off. Then, after the gang rides away, the Lone Ranger and Tonto will leave the train and trail them to their hideout. I see. Later, the law will move in and grab all of them. Some days later, at the railroad station east of Redtown, the westbound express slowed to a stop. So long, Hank. Go on, see you later. One of the express guards left the train and was replaced by a tall, well-built figure. The Lone Ranger, in disguise, was greeted by the remaining guard in the express car. Hi, mister. Reckon you're the replacement, huh? That's right. Here are my signed orders. Oh, good. We're carrying a big shipment of new money to Pecos. Guess if crooks try to get at it, why, you and I can hold them off. We'll hmm? do our best. My name's Hank Willis. What's yours? Just call me Bill. Right. Now we'll close and bolt the door. Eh, <laughs> got express to pick up at Red Town. After that, we stay locked in here till we reach Pecos. Here we go. Forty-two 
Twenty miles west in Redtown, Chet Kane climbed into the wooden chest in the storeroom at his place of business. Now, before you close the lid and put the padlock in place, I want to give you a few last-minute instructions. All right. I don't want anything to go wrong. Yeah, don't worry. Put the chest onto the wagon and drive it right to the station. The westbound will arrive in about oh, an hour and a half from now. Gil, you and Sid stick close and help put the chest into the express car. All right. Make sure it's handled carefully. Also, make sure nothing is put on top of it once it's inside the car. Otherwise, I'd be stuck inside. We'll see to it, Chet. Gil and I'll ride the train. The others will be waiting in the gully when the train stops at the water tank five miles from Redson. Good. Next time I see you will be when I open the door of that express car. And when I do, you'll find two dead guards inside. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, before you go to bed tonight, why not have a treat? A big slice of Betty Crocker white cake and a glass of milk. If your mom has Betty Crocker white cake mix on hand, it couldn't be easier. In fact, you can surprise your folks and bake a delicious white cake yourself. The finest ingredients are right in the mix. So all you have to do is add water and the whites of two fresh eggs. Isn't that easy? And quick, too. You just pop it into the oven, and the result is always perfect. Betty Crocker promises you a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. And you can frost your Betty Crocker white cake with a thick, creamy chocolate frosting. Or enjoy it plain with a dish of ice cream. You know, Betty Crocker white cake has all the special goodness and keeping quality of the best homemade Ask Mom to keep several packages of Betty Crocker cake mix on hand and bake up a perfect cake soon. Now to continue. Sid and Gill drove the chest containing Chet Kane to the express office at the railroad station. unlocked the big side door and slid it open. The Lone Ranger stood guard and watched as the station agent hauled the chest and other express shipments up to the car door. Hey, that chest is heavy. Look at your hand. Keep your gun handy, mister. Cover him while we get this chest aboard. All right. All right, boys. Come on up. Put it here against the wall. All right. That does it. Thanks. I'm glad to help. Thanks. Thanks, fellas. Huh? <laughs> now we're locked in till we reach Pecos. Run between here and there is where the holdups are taking place. But we don't have to worry about the express anymore. As the train left Red Town and sped toward the water tank five miles away, the guard spoke with a chuckle. <laughs> That's the first time I ever saw anybody who was willing to give a hand loading the express. In fact, they couldn't have been more careful than handling the pine box with the corpse inside of it. Look at all the printing on it. This side up, handled with care. I wonder what's in it. So do I. As he leaned against the wall of the express car, the Lone Ranger eyed the chest carefully and thought he saw one of the bolts turn. He quickly crossed to it and gave it a close inspection, but made no comment. Meantime, in the passenger car, Sid and Gil talked in low voices. Well, we got the chest in the express car all right. Looks like Chet Kane's plan is a good one. Yeah. Let's saunter out to the car platform, and then we'll be ready to run into the brush and head for the gully. Come on, let's go. All right. lessened its speed. The guard in the express car spoke to the Lone Ranger. We're going to stop to take on water at that tank up ahead. I wondered why the train was slowing. How long will it stay at the tank? Oh, about five minutes. The Lone Ranger walked to one of the small barred windows and looked out just as the train stopped. He 
saw two men who apparently had left the passenger coach run into the brush. Though he had but a fleeting look, he recognized one of them as the man who had helped with the chest at Redtown. Suddenly, the guard spoke excitedly. Hey, look, riding from the gully. Gang of outlaws. Get to the gun slots. Hurry, mister. Inside the chest, Kane quickly unscrewed the nuts and shoved out the bolts. Then, with gun in hand, he slowly raised the lid of the chest and saw the Lone Ranger facing him with both guns trained on him. Judge Kane, I've been looking for you ever since you skipped out on a murder charge in Arizona. Now, drop that gun. Drop it. Step out of that chest with your hands raised. Sure, sure. Kane stepped slowly from the chest with his eyes fixed on the Lone Ranger. Pretending to trip, he lunged forward suddenly. I'll fix you. Aiming a blow with his fist at the Lone Ranger's midriff. Well, that's the way you want it, huh? Quickly, the Lone Ranger holstered his guns, then lunged at Kane. You asked for this? No. Chet Kane was big and muscular and put every ounce of strength into his blows. But he soon found he was no match for his opponent. The Lone Ranger, wishing to end the fight in a hurry, held no punches, swinging with sledgehammer blows that soon had Kane swaying dizzily. You? Then with a fast right followed by a left to Kane's chin, he finished the battle. I will keep him quiet for a while. The outlaws are concentrating on the express fire. Well, what happened back there? How'd you know he was in that chest? Tell you later. Keep firing. Outside, the outlaws had been firing at the express car and waiting for Chet to open the doors. Finally, Sid Gill and two others were the only ones able to ride away. Something's wrong. The guards are alive and shooting at us. Oh, my arm! Something went wrong with Chet's scheme. Let's get away from here. Come on, boys. Get him, get him, get him. Inside the express car, the Lone Ranger and the guard saw the outlaws leaving. The guard spoke. Well, they're gone. But, man alive, if you hadn't known about that hombre in the chest... I became have... suspicious of the loose bolts and figured what might happen when I recognized one of the men out there who'd helped load the chest. I'm leaving you. Open the door and bolt it after me. And tie that crook and deliver him to the sheriff in Pecos. I'm not supposed to open doors for anybody, mister. Here, so... read my orders. Huh? Well, that does it. I'll open up. See you later, guard. Right. Right. Meantime, Toto, who had done his part to fight off the outlaws, took Silver and Scout from the baggage car. He mounted Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Butler. Come, Scout. Come, Silver. Then, leading Silver, rode to meet the Lone Ranger. Oh, Scout. Oh, Butler. You all right, Kimasami? Yes, Hello. We caught one of the crooks in the express car. Chet Kane wanted for murder in Arizona. The train crew will round up the wounded crooks. Four of them got away. We'll trail them. Easy, steady, big fella. Oh, Panic-stricken by the failure of Chet Kane's plan, three of the gang, taking orders from Gill, took time to cover their trail, then rode back to town. Oh, oh, oh. They left their horses in a grove behind Chet's store and gathered in the back office. Uh, something went wrong. They must have spotted Chet. Well, we'll have time to clean out his safe and the loot from the other jobs. Then we'll head for the border. Right. Why don't you help Chet bandage his arm while I get the stuff from the safe? Yeah. It's a good Come thing on, I know the combination. Get some water. 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 came and tipped us off. Get their guns, men. Yeah. What's all this? That's the loot for most of the train robberies, Sheriff. Oh, you must be the masked man the Indian told me about. That's right. We trail crooks here. Then we go tell you. These two, Sid and Gill, work for Chet Kane, the owner of this place. They spoke of a man named Chet. He was the leader of the gang, from what I gather. Oh, look, Sheriff. Chet's the man you want. He made us go along with him. He was... What's the... this here? They seem to be a history of each man's crimes. Kane must have had these written and signed to give him control of the gang. Uh, so Chet Kane led the gang, huh? Where is he now? 
Briefly, the Lone Ranger told all that had happened, and that he recognized Kane as a man wanted for murder in Arizona. When he finished, the sheriff remarked, And well, I'll ask him to send Kane back here to face trial. <laughs> you sure were smart, mister, to turn the tables on him. Kane had us all fooled. The railroad rewards you plenty for getting this stuff back and for leading us to the gang. We didn't do it for the reward, Sheriff. It's reward enough for Toto and me to know we've helped to make the West a place for law-abiding citizens to settle and live. I think you have all the evidence you need against Chet Kane and these men. Yep, we sure have. And they'll face a murder charge, too, for the death of that express clerk a while back during one of the hold-ups. Good. Come on, Toto. I want to telegraph the news to Mr. Belding. Uh -huh. we see you again soon, Sheriff. Adios. Adios, everybody. Goodbye. 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 <laughs> I had a laugh when the mash man told about Chet Kane hiding in that chest aboard the train. <laughs> He'd never have lifted that lid if he'd known he was going to face the Lone Ranger. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.